Hi Air Travel Lovers, this is Ken and a warm welcome back to my subscribers. Today I will be relishing the air travel experience with Cathay Pacific from Hong Kong to Singapore. How about you? Me? I will be flying with Singapore Airlines from Singapore to Hong Kong in their business class. Well, 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 CX versus SQ, who do you think will win out? Just shout out the name of the airline or comment below before continuing on the video. Filming this video was quite challenging as I wanted to keep the comparison as fair as possible. To try to put them on the same footing, both flights depart early in the morning, and so poor me. I would have preferred a bit more sleep, but it would have been difficult to sleep long anyway with the anticipation of flying. A very good morning from the Hong Kong International Airport and the Singapore Changi International Airport from the two Mies respectively. The business class check-in counters of both Cathay and Singapore were quite empty on the day of filming, and therefore both check-ins were efficient. The agents of both airlines were very professional, but also rather mechanical and by the book. Neither had come across as particularly friendly or welcoming, which was a bit surprising. Am I making you dizzy with the shots back and forth between Hong Kong and Singapore? Let's stay in Singapore for the time being to experience Singapore Airlines' Silver Crest Lounge. Interestingly, all premium cabin lounges are co-located in Changi Terminal 3, taking up quite some space in the terminal. I remember turning right into the business class lounge, and my first impression of it was it was quite empty with plenty of seats. One of the many benefits of taking an early flight, I suppose. But it wasn't long when I realized that that wasn't actually the case. As I made my way to the other wing of the lounge, where most of the food was, I saw the lounge teeming with travelers, even though it was just 6 or 7 in the morning. I hope they didn't wake up this early for the food though, as the food on offer in the buffet was just standard Asian and Western fare. After a thorough look through, I decided to visit the noodle counter instead for a hot bowl of made to order laksa noodles. And at around the same time of day, Hong Kong Ken had just finished his breakfast in the Wing First Class Lounge and was heading over to the Pier Business Class Lounge for filming so as to keep the comparison apples to apples. Unlike Singapore Airlines' centralized lounge location, Cathay has three business class lounges scattered throughout the terminal, and the pier is the biggest of the three. Its interior design is my favorite, as the use of walnut wood creates a kind of ambience that is at once classy and premium, yet also homey. Because it was still early, and with the pier being the furthest one from immigration, the lounge wasn't too full. As you go deeper into this chambered lounge, you pass a grab-and-go buffet where simple international dishes are available if you are in a hurry. Then there is a long wine bar for those who need to unwind and relax. Going further, you have the signature noodle bar for something more substantial. And finally, there is the tea house which also lets you unwind and relax but with tea instead of alcohol. Hmm, which one did you like more? Both lounges were great, but just to me, I really loved the interior design of the pier, and so I cast my vote for Cathay Pacific in terms of the lounge experience. After leaving the lounge, I headed to gate 71 to board the Airbus 350-900 jet flying me from Hong Kong to Singapore. Oh hey, where are you, Singapore Ken? I've always loved the uniform of SQ's cabin crew. See how professional they look. Oh wait, hang on. I'm already running late, so let me make my way to gate A12 to jump on board the Boeing 777-300ER jet taking me from Singapore to Hong Kong.
Upon boarding, SQ offered Singapore Ken a glass of orange juice as a welcome drink. Cheers! While Cafe offered Hong Kong Ken a glass of apple juice, served alongside a hot towel. Welcome aboard Singapore Airlines. As the safety equipment on this aircraft may differ from that on other aircraft, please give us your attention. Will automatically drop in front of you. Welcome to business class. We were fortunate enough to get aircrafts featuring the flagship long haul seat product on both airlines. So let's get to comparing the cabins. To start off, let's move beyond and check out Cafe Pacific's business class seat. Cafe continues to adopt a reverse herringbone cabin layout for its A350 business class. The 38 seats are arranged in a 1 to 1 layout across two cabins. And for maximum privacy, I picked seat 21A, a seat in the mini cabin behind door 2 with only two rows. The flight was quite full today with 80 to 90 percent of the seats occupied. And now, let's take a look at the seat. This seat is an upgraded and refined version of the older seats you find on the 777s. Each seat is preset with a pillow to better support your back. Storage is something that I care about a lot when I fly, and I am happy to report that the storage space in the seat is plentiful. In particular, I love the cubby hole located under the side table that offers massive storage. Inside the smaller cabinet next to the seat, you can find a pair of noise cancelling headsets, an electric socket, and a USB charging port. The HDTV is sharp and clear, with a size perfect for the viewing distance, and the touchscreen is very responsive. But when I wanted to enjoy the in-flight entertainment though, I found out that the headphones aren't working. And what made things worse was that the remote control wasn't working either. Quite a disappointment. But I didn't ring the call bell for assistance though, as there were many other things to keep me occupied on the flight. And here on board Singapore Airlines, where world class is their claim to fame. Let's see if their business class is world class. Unlike Cafe's cooler color tones, the SQ cabin uses warmer colors and looks a bit more premium to me. Today's flight on SQ was quite empty, with only 30 to 40 percent of the seats filled. I was in 23A, the last row of the main cabin, where there was also a very high degree of privacy as most passengers were seated towards the front of the cabin. Preset on each seat, you can find a check patent cushion that's very portly and comfortable. In terms of storage space, SQ's business class seat product also has ample storage. But unlike on CX where you get one giant space, SQ has multiple smaller cubicles. So make sure you don't leave anything behind in any of them before leaving the plane. While Cafe can sometimes be stingy with their bottled water, SQ generously presets one in each seat alongside the headsets. Your electronic devices can be juiced up using the socket or with the USB port. The remote control, which looks the same as on CX, is luckily functioning. But what I didn't like was the TV, which is very glossy, making your reflection very easy to see, but the media content much less so. But on the plus side, there's complimentary Wi-Fi for premium passengers and frequent flyer members. Much to my surprise, an amenity kit was also preset in the seat for this regional flight. However, the amenities inside were rather basic. Slippers were also available upon request. And now, let's mm, gently shrug our taste buds as we compare Singapore Airlines' and Cafe Pacific's premium breakfast dining experience. <laughs>
Both airlines served breakfast on a tray. Alongside your choice of pastries, I enjoyed a fruit platter as the appetizer on both flights. Singapore Airlines offers muesli on request, while Cafe Pacific provides cereals, also only when you ask. This is my first time flying Singapore Airlines out of Singapore with the book to cook service. And of course, I cannot miss this very signature after Femidal on Singapore Airlines. Cathay does not have a meal pre-booking system, with your onboard choice today being a dim sum platter, an omelette, or Chinese fried noodles. I went with the Chinese fried noodles. I ended the meal with a glass of iced Milo on SQ and a cup of tea on Cathay. Hands down, Singapore Airlines wins the meal service category. After breakfast, the lights in the cabin were dimmed, and I decided to get to the bathroom to brush my teeth before taking a power nap. To make the bed on Singapore Airlines, the seat has to be turned upside down like this. Despite the short flight time, I was delighted to learn that a mattress was available and the crew readily made the bed for me. Without a doubt, it really is true luxury to get such comfortable bedding on a 3-hour regional flight. However, the very narrow footwall significantly marred the sleeping experience. On Cathay, there's no mattress or seat cover, but the seat can be turned into a fully flat bed easily with a simple press of the recline button. The seat width is also much more consistent head to toe. To me, I would say Cathay seats are better in terms of speed comfort. And finally, in-flight service. Singapore Airlines leads here. I would say Cafe Pacific's cabin crew gave more of a work-to-rule impression. The service was consistently good, but it didn't go beyond good, quite evidently related to the high loading and reduced manpower. Singapore Airlines' crew were more engaging, taking the initiative to strike up conversations with me on multiple occasions, with the light loading no doubt helping in this regard. It wasn't long after when our destinations began coming into view. And so, who wins out overall? This is a highly trafficked route with very heavy competition between SQ and CX for premium cabin passengers. And I'm sure both airlines have their ardent fans. This may be disappointing to some of my viewers, but I will not be giving a quantitative final score in this video as I don't think a single number is a helpful measure. Instead, I think what matters is knowing what you value more. Is it the lounge, the bed, the meal, or the service? I hope this video has given you an overview of each of these aspects of the travel experience with both Cafe Pacific and Singapore Airlines. If you ask me which airline I want to be flying next time on this route, how about Cafe Pacific if you're flying out of Hong Kong, and Singapore Airlines if you're flying out of Singapore? Please let me know what you think and how your travel experiences have been on these two airlines. Thank you for relishing the air travel experience with me today. May I invite you to join me in savoring our next journey.